Hello and welcome to the Madniverse. Today we're going to explore 60 parsecs, like 60 seconds. This time instead of a nuclear fallout world, now you're in space with pretty much nowhere to go and trying to somehow get rescued. So let's go ahead and begin. We got Space Drill, Voyager, and Survival. Let's go ahead and do a Space Drill since they don't really know what I'm doing here. Uh, I don't know. I'll go DD, why not? Nuclear apocalypse imminent, executing order 1961. Command zone on an emergency drill, brace for nuclear impact. All right, sure. Why not? You got some very interesting stuff I saw. You gotta do crafting now. I don't really think you rely on water anymore. Maybe, maybe not, I'm not sure, but I guess we'll find out, won't we? All scared and everything. Let's see, welcome to Icarus 13 Space Station. You gotta move, got it. Grab some soup, can do. Take some of that, drop it into the escape shuttle. Sure, why not? And throw. <laughs> oh, you gotta just love how you just throw things down there with reckless abandon. I need that, uh, yeah, hello, you just yell into that phone, why don't you? <laughs> I don't think that's gonna work. It's not even hooked up to anything. But whatever, I mean, you do you. Okay, find the handbook. This must be it over here, Mr. Highlighted, thank you. Cosmos 101. Crafting resources. Oh, which is this thing? I'll take that. Throw that in there. A crewmate. Hmm. Oh, we got a person right here. <laughs> All panicking. Well, I mean, I'm doing the same thing, so I'll grab you. And throw you in there. Alert! 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 Incoming missile! High risk of impact. Goody. Grab whatever you can and head for the escape shuttle. Not a problem. I'm gonna grab a lot of these. Thank you. I got quite a bit of soup. You always need soup. Why not? Takes whatever that is. I have no idea. What else can I have? I'll take that too. And throw that in there. I'll grab that phone. Ooh, a lighter. I'll take that. Phone takes up three spaces. It's a lot of space. Come here, dude. I'm gonna grab you too. Come on. Tape, tape, tape. Need the tape. Need the mask. I think that's a mask. I have no idea what that is. I'm sure we'll find out. Grab that, grab that. Grab another soup. Go, 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 go. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, yeah, there we go. And we need to grab one more person. Yeah, need to grab her too. Oh, oh, is that a phaser? I will take that. Run, 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 run. Oh boy. Yeah. I don't think there's much else I can grab here at this point. Awesome. <laughs> cool flicking. Flicking. Flipping. Not uh, flicking. Alright, whatever. <laughs> oh boy. I need rescuing. Somebody help me. Waiting. There we go. Okay. Hello. Day one. There's everybody. An artifact. I don't know what it is, but I grabbed it. Med kit. Got seven soups. Not that much. Got my communicator. Main computer. There's my handbook. Okay, okay, okay. Yep, it was a mask. Okay, I was making sure. All right. Greetings, Astro Computerized Assistant, reporting for duty. You must be Dee Dee, right? I am pleased to announce that due to your actions during the escape, you are the perfect candidate to become the captain of this vessel. Welcome aboard the escape shuttle, Captain. On behalf of the Astro, uh, uh, the Astro Citizen Program, geez, please accept our apologies for the tiny inconvenience of being blown 60 parsecs away from Earth. Recommended course of action, find a safe place to land on. Yeah, I was about to say. I was, did I read that right? Maybe we'll go to said planet. I don't know. Find a safe place to land on and try to contact the outside world. Please turn on the main computer for further instructions. It is located in the center of the shuttle. Follow the regular ra rationing protocol and feed your crew. I await your decisions, Captain. Okay. What is this? Goals. Crew. Statistics. Okay. All right. Captain, since you have just taken command, the protocol dictates a speech must be given. A good one. Scratch that. A great one. Everyone is really looking forward to your speech, Captain. So am I. I am too. 
This is it. You can really show that breed of captain, yet you will you be this incredible journey. What kind of speech will you give? Intelligence is a rank one. Strength is a rank one. My agility is a rank three there. I'll give agility. Yeah. Did it happen? Did I give the speech? Um, end day, I, I guess. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I just literally click in the flashing things. I have no idea what's going on. Number four, has anyone given a speech so de uh, determined and to the point? Not any space captain, at least. You spoke on making your own luck and surviving. It really sounded like you knew what you were talking about. Did you? That was quite a performance, Captain. Your crew started cheering even before you were finished with the speech. Long live the Captain! Filled the cabin. If any sound could travel through the soundless void outside the hull of your ship, that would be it. One thing is for sure, you are ready for any challenges this galaxy throws at you. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. Captain, it's important to keep yourself and your crew well fed. One portion of delicious canned soup is enough to sustain a human for a few days. Whatever you took from the space station will have to last you for a while. That's why it's important to keep good inventory of your stock. Unless you want to eat your own crewmates. <laughs> that was a joke. Is it? I mean, if you get hungry enough, people will start eating each other. I do have a blaster in the corner. People will use it. Please appreciate it and laugh. Thank you for your cooperation, Captain. Who will perform the routine supply check? The only requirement is simple mathematics. I realize I might be asking a lot, but I have a good feeling about this crew, Captain. Um, could do Dee Dee, Baby Bronco, that's an interesting name, Emmett Ellis, and Megan Mann. Okay. Um, yeah, how about you, Emmett? Go ahead. End of day. Okay, now what? Day three. What do we got? Good news, Captain. The shuttle, oh, somehow I gained three soups. Cool, and two more. The shuttle came pre-stocked with emergency food supply. Use it well. The routine supply check is now complete. Well, well, look at that. The numbers add up. Good job, human crew. Current number of su canned soups can uh, on board is 10. But I had seven to start with. Okay. Correction, the accurate tally is actually 12. Yes. Additional foodstuffs were delivered to the shuttle instead of entertainment supplies. Lucky you. The food you collected is more than sufficient for now. Just don't eat it all at once. You got it. Captain, the crafting module is back on the uh, in the back of the cabin has been activated. You might remember this from your Astro Citizen training. This stage, uh, state of art machine lets you create something from almost nothing. All you need is a little bit of uh, minerals, uh, chemicals, or power. Use it to craft, recycle, and repair your supplies, as well as upgrade items and shuttle systems. Cool. Um. Recycle? I uh, can't upgrade anything. I can recycle stuff. What about craft? I can craft soup. Of course. <laughs> Why not? I don't think anything needs repairing, so I think we're okay there. Alright, let's do some soup. Why not? End of day. Probably supposed to be feeding these people, too. Eventually. I mean, they've been here for a while. Maybe one more day and then I can. Captain, I told you I started up the crafting system in the back of the shuttle. I recommend utilizing the machine. Crafting complete. New item available? One soup. Captain, one of our non-critical subsystems is having a meltdown. The malfunction is serious and the system won't talk to me. It, is, it has to be dealt with directly. If you don't do anything, the breakdown will spill a brain cell... What? Will spill a brain cell? A tropy inducing coolant into your ventilation. Oh, that sounds terrible. In other words, you better improvise a solution to this crisis. Uh, artifact? <laughs> what does the artifact do? Will it fix my thing? I hope so. Um, let's go ahead and feed people too. Might be a good idea. End day. I don't know. I think it's like five days is like a max limit before people go hungry. I'm not sure. Have to figure that out. 
you put your faith in the artifact as the subsystem was melting. Imagine my surprise when the coolant spilled, but stopped on the bubble of protective energy the item produced. What? <laughs> well, it's a good thing I used the artifact. I filtered the spillage out of the shuttle, fur in the clear, and lucky for you. Brain cell atrophy would just be the worst right now. Emma report being glad to have you, <laughs> you as the captain. Thank you, Emmett. Thank you. I, I guess that's what that look is for. Mm -hmm. He's loyal. That's cool. Awesome. <laughs> Does it tell me what everybody else is? No. I guess I gotta work on them then. Captain! Fantastic news! The scanners have picked up a container floating in our vicinity. I wonder what's inside. What now, Captain? Should we try to pull the container on board? Oh, it's not always a good idea to pull stuff from nowhere, not knowing what it is, but, uh, sure, why not? We'll try it. Oh, I'm glad my artifact didn't get destroyed either. Cool. And day six. Everybody still doing okay? Looking good. That mysterious cargo the scanner spotted yesterday is now on board. Opening the box in three, two, one. Oh, a battery! Or at least something that seems to work like a battery. Don't you wonder what the story is there, Captain? One thing's for sure, we are not alone out here. I doubt it. But that, thank you for the battery. Oh, says I can use the artifact. Cool. I guess that's the only thing I could use. Something seems to be troubling you, Captain. I've registered you keep staring outside the window into the endless void. Why? Did you lose something? I see. You were remembering Earth. I admit, it was nice. Before the nuclear barbecue, that is. Oh, that's when 60 seconds happened. Yeah. I can switch off for a second, Captain. Do you wish to have a moment to yourself? Artifact. Whatever that's supposed to do. I guess that's a moment to myself? Whatever. <laughs> I'll take it. Sure. Day 7. Everybody still hanging in there? Good, good. Everybody's still there. You've been worried about something, Captain, but it seems those troubles are behind you. I am not surprised by your choice to find comfort with the Astro Citizen issued Astrofact. Trademark. It is guaranteed to resolve any and all of your emotional issues. I can't tell if it was the mumbling to, uh, if it was mumbling to or the ju uh, juggling of the artifact that helped. I juggled it? Okay. But I am glad to see you are doing better. Baby's hungry, Emmett's hungry, Megan is hungry. Of course they are. Your attention is required, Captain. This is most abnormal. We are registering unknown transmissions, but I cannot identify who is sending them or more importantly, what they contain. It might be a solar flare inf interface. Interference. Eey. Or worse, a new type of Soviet encryption. We need to decipher these signals as soon as possible. For all we know, our survival depends on it. Who do you want to put in charge of monitoring these communications? Let the smart guy do it. That's pretty smart. You go ahead and do it. Everybody seems to be hungry. So well. Go ahead and... There we go. You guys can eat. I won't eat. For now. Didn't say I was hungry, so maybe she'll be hungry today. First contact. Awesome. Captain, you need to see this. I'm not easily excited, but this is one of the greatest moments for humanity and human, uh, human made ali AI alike. We are not alone in this universe. The signals were intercepted were finally decrypted. They are alien transmissions, as in coming from other life forms. And no, I do not mean the reds. It's something we have never seen before. There seems to be a number of intelligent citizen civilizations in this galaxy. The signals are coming from everywhere. We can safely assume we are going to meet some of them sooner or later. Our, or rather your life, will need to be the same, Captain. You should eat something, Captain. Baby says he is glad to have you as his captain. Mega said she is happy. Good. I'm glad. I think they're smiling. Hungry? You guys just ate. How are you guys hungry? Oh boy. Interesting news, Captain. It appears that there's a hollow space behind one of the wall panels. A hidden room, maybe? A secret stash? It would be worth checking out. What's your approach to finding out what's behind the panel? I'm gonna go with the bigger stat. And I'm gonna give her some food. I don't know how everybody's hungry. I just fed them. Oh, boy. 
Yesterday, you reached a hidden space behind one of the wall panels. The only way to get there was through the ventilation shaft, but thankfully, you were able- you were nimble enough to fit in and exit through the other side. Unfortunately, you found nothing. Well, that's just great, thanks. The area was small and completely empty. This didn't seem to phase you much. I suppose you are used to disappointments by now. Megan seems loyal. Okay, or remains loyal. That's awesome. How are you guys hungry? Seriously. Caffeinated. What? <laughs> I mean, she is drinking coffee. When did she get that? Okay. Captain, you neglected your oral hygiene and haven't brushed your teeth in a while. So now, you need to pull that nasty tooth before it gets wor- Oh. Don't worry, it's only going to hurt a little, and there might be a co complimentary sticker in it for you. As per protocol, the necessary tools were automatically dispensed. One piece of string and a bottle of... Anesthetic? It has Astro Citizen logo and Anesthetic handwritten on it. Somebody does not know how to smell then. Oh, well, I guess as long as we know what it is. Will you require an assistant for this surgery? Um, uh, sure, let's go with Megan. Let's try that, see what happens. Don't kill me, guys. Day 10. Everybody's still here, good. You took it like a champ, but terrified and disgusted, Megan went into shock and insisted on drinking the whole bottle of anesthetic. That's not a good thing, to calm her nerves. When Megan was done, she seemed more energized and tougher than before. I don't think it was regular medicine. Baby remains loyal. That's good. What's that you're drawing, Captain? Is that supposed to be ham? I understand. You're fed up with soup and you're reminiscing about Earth food. I would advise you don't go down that road. Here, I have a useful program for you for just, the equa uh, just this occasion. It's called, Everything is Not All Peaches and Cream. That's not gonna help. It's just more food. It's just not ham. We're okay. It should help you focus your mind on different things. Would you like to start this process? Sure, why not? What's the... Uh, I was about to say, what's that you're drawing? But it's like, I already read that. Don't need to read that again. Hungry, hungry, hung loyal and hungry. Caffeinated and hungry. Everybody's hungry. Everybody needs to stop being hungry. I'll feed you in a little bit. Not yet. Success, Captain! Your culinary urges have been kept under control. We spent the afternoon talking about things other than food, and then circled back to agree on what many merits of tomato soup. Now, we should probably focus on surviving this mission at hand, wouldn't you say? Remember, life is but a bowl of cherries. And I'm not sure what that means, but my programming tells me it should make you feel better. Yeah, sure, thanks. Talk about more food. What's up? Captain, it is time for the ultimate honor. The most humble task available on this shuttle. Mopping the floor. Oh, thanks. From dried up bodies... Ooh, of squished bugs. Goody. To a fine coating of skin dust. The place could do with the good scrubbing. Baby looks free. Will you ask him to apply some elbow grease? Or request the improv... Uh, improv... Uh, imp uh, improvises a cleaning formula from whatever we have on board. Baby, you're out. Help me out, man. Okay, end day. Friend zone? What the heck is friend zone? Oh, everybody's hungry. I know, I know, guys. You ordered baby to clean all on all fours and rub the clean, uh, rub the floor clean. Just what a perfect Astro Citizen leader would do, ma'am. Being the respectful crewmate he is, Baby was happy to oblige and worked away any eh, worked away at even the smallest pock marks down there on the floor. Cleaner shuttle, happier Astro Citizens. Captain, I told you I started up the crafting system in the back of the shuttle. I recommend utilizing this machine. Baby is starving, trying to find him something to eat. Emma considers you a friend. He's starving. And Megan is starting, she shouldn't go on without food for any longer. Okay. I'll get to it. Let me craft some soup first. Need to do that. What? Hello there, Captain. Might I ask you why you are going through the files? You're not really meant to see the contents of my digital storage unit. Huh. Protox. Now that's a fun file. Just please don't- Oh no. What have you done? You shouldn't have ran that program. 
Protocol X initiated. That's a secret protocol. It was meant to be an experiment. The consequences of initiating the protocol will be severe. Use your skills or do something, Captain. Oh crap. I don't have much. I'll, you do, I'll do that. And I'll get everybody some food. Yeah. Everybody good? Are we okay? No more? We're fine? I hope so. Yeah, everybody's good. Despite your feats of strength, you weren't able to stop Protocol X. A mutated flu virus has been released through ventilation. Oh crap. Affecting you almost immediately. That's Protocol X for you. There are a lot of protocols devised by the masterminds behind the Astro Citizen program that should never be initiated. Look, you have a fever already. Your nose is runny and you're coughing. The virus is working its way through your body, and your crewmates got sick as well. What a fiasco. Crafting completed, new item available, soup, and everybody's hungry apparently. Again. I just fed you people. What is that planet out there? Can we go to that planet? We are running out of stuff. Uh, let's recycle the duct tape. And... I guess I have to wait till that's done. Okay. Ma'am, something huge has cropped up on my scanners. A dark, swirly-skied planet is dead ahead. It's covered in a giant storm, but beneath the dark swirls my scanners detect hazy, indistinct heat signatures, and a multitude of structures. A thunderous world is probably an improvement over this mind-boggling empty vacuum. Should I initiate the landing protocol? Sure, why not? We'll see what happens. Come on, let's land. Come on, freedom. Let's do it. Come on. Space colonization. I guess I did it. Apparently I crashed. <laughs> That's not how that was supposed to go. Yep. Yeah. Fobonos? Okay. Oh no, I lost my phone. Well, that's what happens when you crash, huh? And on our descent towards the storm-ridden planet, crewmate Ellis piped up and said, That's no storm. That's nuclear winter. He po uh, pos post posited? Posited? Huh? That this world has seen a nuclear war in its recent history, and we are witnessing the fallout. However, he said that with you in command, we could weather anything. Uh, we'll try. I don't know how far we're going to go with this. With Emmett's note in mind, you beautifully directed our craft past the worst of the storms and onto a safe resting spot on the planet. Unfortunately, however, atmospheric electricity fried the communicator on the way down. Once on the ground, Emmett looked out and realized this wasn't just nuclear winter, this was something else. This planet's surface has experienced a number of wars and traumas, nuclear or otherwise. We'd best be wary while exploring, Captain. Baby's still loyal, making sure that she can still count on her friendship, and recycling is done. Okay. Um, repair communicator, please. Never know when you're gonna need that. Captain, the expedition module is back on the, uh, in the back of the cabin is now active. If you want to survive here, someone has to go outside from time to time. This shuttle will have to do for now, but it's not fit to be permanent shelter. One small step for Astro Citizen, one giant leap for whatever is left of humanity. Oh, so that's what this is. Okay, um, oh, and I can choose the destination. Um, chance for artifact, oh god, okay, uh... Um, I don't really like any of this. Length is two clocks, what's this one? Three clocks, and that one's three clocks too. I guess we're gonna go for this one then. Glade, and we're gonna send out Baby Bronco. Yes. Uh, you can have the phaser, because you never know what you're gonna need out there. And the mask. Okay. You're good to go, man. I should probably feed him before he leaves, though. I guess that's about it, though, so let's go ahead. Um. Give him some food, give me some food, and we're done. Come back, man. I'm gonna need you. Fix it, Felix! <laughs> okay. I know, you guys are hungry, I know. If you're going to send an expedition, why not do it with style? Remember to upgrade your expedition module. Baby went for a stroll into the vast, strange northern forest. 
Let's hope he doesn't enter any gingerbread houses. Repairs completed. New item available. Communicator. You are now, uh, you are now alert. Okay. Emmett is starving. Emmett is taking care of his mental health and is now alert. Oh, I guess that's what that means. And eh, try to find her something to eat. I know, I know, guys. But what do I do? Emmett has been inventing things since he was a little boy. He, he continued his hobby even after he became a professor, though it had never paid the bills. He believes he will could create improved versions of some of the items on board. He's so hell-bent on this idea, he started calling himself the Improvinator. Uh, okay. And won't stop speaking in an Austrian accent. Captain, will you let Emmett experiment on your items? Yeah, sure, go ahead and use the battery. I don't know what it's really going to do for me, so go ahead. Go nuts. Oh no, I don't have any resources for that. Oh boy. Um, Get rid of... Oh, do I need the lighter though? All oh, this does plus 10. Well, this does plus 10 to something else. I don't know what that is. I, uh, but we might need the lighter. Oh boy, this is not good. Uh-oh. I don't have any more rations. That's not good. Oh, people are about to starve. This is not good. Well, still there though. You gave the Improvinator, aka Emmy, the battery. Captain, it was incredible. True to his name, the Improvinator created a new improved battery. Emmett is still starving. Megan looks starved. Emmett is weak. Could you do something about it? Megan appears weak. No, I cannot do anything about it. I am pretty much out. Captain, my weather systems are detecting a storm on the horizon. It's moving fast, so it will hopefully pass by tomorrow. But this one could get nasty, thunder, lightning, gale force winds, sharp objects howling at you from every which way. I'd like to keep monitoring the system's movement throughout the storm, or night. By doing so will require my senses to run on battery power, as it is unadvisable to leave the main generator reactor through a storm. What do you want to do? Yeah, go ahead. It's an improved battery now too, so it might work. I just wish I had some food. Cause um, people are starting to be weak and that's not good. They might leave. You're still there. You ran the weather monitoring systems on battery power. The storm moved south and we were spared the worst of it. By morning, it had completely passed. Oh. Don't you love the smell after it rains? You spent the morning shifting through the washed up uh, junk piles, but it was just a bunch of waterlogged crap. You are still very mentally stable. Oh no, baby hasn't returned yet. That's not good. Oh no, that means he left me. As a child, Emmett has bullied frequently, was bullied frequently for his interest in science. He has been working on a gift for you, Captain, but I can tell he is hesitant to give it to you. Due to his constant raising and body heat and heightened neural activity, my interpretation is that he fears his gift will be unappreciated. Will you accept it? Sure, why not? I don't know how much more he's going to be able to do because we are out of food and Baby is not returned. You stole my gun too. Yep, I think he's gone. Emmett gave you his gift he's been working on. It was a sentimental object assembled from the spare pieces of the shuttle. And still being weak and starving, I know. Captains, our systems are working below their optimal levels. It was able to determine that our wiring might be at fault. I suggest that you take a look under their proverbi uh, pro uh, proverbial hood to fix the wires before a malfunction occurs. The wires are stuffed in a dark corner, tangled and dusty. You'll have to figure out how to fix this by yourself. I trust your instincts. Not that I have a choice. <laughs> right, let's go with the uh, feet of strength again, since that seems to be good. Or the feet of agility. But she's not going to last very long. Baby just took off. And the other two pretty much might be dead. Yeah. Oh, he returned. Hello. And I already lost somebody. Yeah, that's not good. Nice one, Captain. You dove deep into the sea of cables, swiftly untangling them and reconnecting them all in the right places. I'm sure you knew what you were doing all along, and you didn't just get lucky. Right, Captain? The ship systems are once again working at optimal capacity. You have nothing to worry about, for now, at least. 
baby has returned from his jaunt to the eastern glade. He is limping a little, famishing after the journey and a bit freaked out. You get comfortable as he begins to tell his story. On the journey, Baby was struck by a fragile falling tree or two. He is in a bit of a, a bit of a state. From the bottom of the shimmering pond, he scooped up a number of valuable minerals. What an eerie but fruitful experience. In spite of the spookiness, Baby is safely back in the nest. Baby is still out, but he's not. Emmett is starving. Megan is starving. Baby is weak. Megan is no longer among the living. Lack of food does that to people. <laughs> yes, it does. Captain, we were able to detect transmissions of unknown origin. Unfortunately, the communication console has been damaged during landing. And we can only make anything. Uh, we cannot make anything out of them, or reply for that matter. We can hardwire our primitive field communicator to bypass the damaged subsystems and access the shuttle's external transmitter and receiver. Okay, go ahead. I'm not gonna last very long, so um, do what you need to do, I guess. Emmett is probably gonna die now. Sadly, there was nothing I could do about it. Yep, and Emmett's gone. Great success, Captain! Communicator attached to the communications console works like a charm. I won't judge the aesthetics, since we are finally receiving and answer transmissions. Now all we need to do is wait for someone to contact us. Someone will find us, eventually. The crew was visibly excited by this incredible feat of engineering. They were only slightly smirking. While looking at the patched communications console, tomorrow will be great, Captain. You remain very mentally stable. Baby is in poor health, Emmett still looks starving, Baby was rested, Emmett died from starvation. Yeah. Ma'am, Baby Bronco has been in a strange mood all day. You finally decide to ask him what's up. Cap, Baby says. No one's ever trusted me with anything but my muscles. All I ever hear is how I've been just brawn. My parents used to say I always stronged on myself into more trouble than I was worth. Cap, he whispered. Am I a Libby lay liability? Well, Captain? Uh, no. I'm gonna say. I don't think so. Cross the stars. When Baby was receiving a crisis of purpose, you reassured him that he's not a liability. You said while his brawn is useful, his good nature and keenness are what make him a team favorite. Very tactful, Captain. Baby's eyes welled up. You're the closest thing I've ever had to a mom, Cap, he said. My didn't do much for me. The only reason I'm here is Mama and Papa Bronco gave me up to the cops. They left me in jail, said I wasn't even theirs. You both got a bit emotional and Bronco laid his massive head on your shoulder. You don't remember feeling this protective of anyone or anything. Oh boy. Um, but I can't craft anything like that though. That's what's pretty bad. Um, I need to see about making some soup. Why? Oh yeah, forgot I gotta do this too. There is nothing to report, Captain. I suggest you, Captain. Would you mind covering your mouth when you yawn? I thought you got a good night's sleep. Wait, could this be boredom? Yes. I have heard of the humans need excitement in their lives to function properly. How curious. Captain, you're sitting in a state-of-the-art space shuttle, drifting through the deep cosmos, full of wonder and mystery. Can you at least pretend you're having a good time? Yeah, sure, we'll use the book and we'll see. <laughs> it ain't gonna do me much. Uh, this is not good. If I could just get someone to live. It's all I need. Oh no. Bronco's dead. Yesterday started pretty slow, but you managed to turn it around. Browsing your Astro Citizen handbook on the toil. I mean, in the airlock. You found a set of exercises and decided to try them out. You did jumping jacks all afternoon. How fun. But more importantly, it was healthy. You feel much better now. I'm still hungry, though. Uh, try soup. Uh, can I, uh, I can't, I don't think I can recycle anything while I'm trying to craft something. Oh, boy. Over a hillock nearby, you found a strange car-like vehicle with a scrappy humanoid robot mulling around it. The bot appears to be a recycling droid, putting up bits of dirt and mushrooms, consuming them, then vomiting them back out. Okay. 
It appears to have been here for a long time. Its joints rusted and busted. It repeatedly plugs itself into the vehicle to no avail. So do we jumpstart the vehicle's engine? Sure, why not? If it'll mean somebody gives me soup, sure. I just hope she lasts for the day. Come on, don't die on me. Whew, okay, good. Still alive. We use the battery to jumpstart... Oh... Yeah, well, at least I got one soup can. We use the battery to jumpstart the lonely little scrapyard ve robot's vehicle. Its lens-like eyes properly lit up, and it jabbed a, a... jammed a prodded hand into a socket of the chassis. It whirred back into vigorous life before zipping around and collecting rubbish from nearby. Its insides squeezed up and nearby junk... Uh, up the nearby junk, and out the funnel of the droid's face. Feel poured into one of its uh, into a loose can it was holding. It handed the liters of gas to us, hopped into the vehicle buzzing and squeaking, and zoomed off across the grimy dunes. It turns out androids do dream of electric jeeps. Okay. Well, at least I got my soup, so I can at least eat something. I am a machine, and machines cannot hear voices. The voices that I am not hearing right now are getting very loud, though. Oh, you hear them too? My weight sensors are picking up some, uh, picking up something, yeah. as well. A two-dimensional species. That explains why my cameras miss them. Quite vicious, I gather. With one decisive yell, the voices are approaching fast. The air inside the door, uh, door looks very empty, yet very hostile all of a sudden. How will you defend us? Lighter. And can of soup, because I only got one. Should have done my crafting, though. Man, keep forgetting about that. At least she ate something. Plain whaling? Okay. A two-dimensional species invaded your ship. You could not see them coming until you turned on a lighter. Suddenly, the empty space around you cast a multitude of shadows on every surrounding wall. Invisible to the 3D world most of the time, they could not handle the spotlight. Bashfully, they slipped out one by one. Staring might be rude, but apparently it wins battles and saves lives. You yeah, she used to eat something. I just did. What more stuff do you expect me to eat? Uh, since she can't leave, I guess I might as well get rid of the mask. Captain, our communication equipment is detecting something. I don't think it's transmission. I think it's a... a whale? Something is crying out for help nearby. Would you like to go and investigate? Yes. Why not? Might as well go see what we're dealing with. Hopefully she doesn't die out there. She's the only person left. You went out to investigate the eerie crying sound of the stormy dyspo dystopian plains and came back with a stumbling little alien. It seems weak. Oh, there he is. He's on the floor. Uh, what am I supposed to do about that? It seems weak, possibly injured, and as lonely as the emergency skate pod flying through the cosmos, you brought it in and propped it up in the corner. You remain quite alert. Still in poor health, though. So we're gonna craft some more soup. I don't know what to do about that guy. The shuttle is in danger. I just got rid of that, too. Come on. The shuttle is in danger, Captain. We are on the path to a vicious gale of nasty chemical composition. While it's threatening to sabotage our air filters, they need to be protected. But I lost the remote control due to micro damage from the winds. They have to be closed manually. The toxic tornado is close enough that going out there without the proper equipment will be suicide. If if you could do it, and if you could do anything, now is the time to act, Captain. I cannot, cause I just literally got rid of my mask. Ah, man, I knew I should have kept that. Yeah, what can you do? I still have the thing to heal her up, though, so. Not without the, uh, not wanting to risk your health is generally a good instinct, Captain. But this time around, it might have been the wrong call. The toxic winds blew over the shuttle and got into our unsecured air filters. The chemical makeup of the winds is such that it should kill most human uh, organisms immediately. The fact that you're still standing is a feat in itself, Captain. I really hope it's not just rigor mortis setting in. Blink if you can hear me. Whew, what a relief. I thought you were a goner for a second there. You appeared to still be weak. And I'm hurt badly, so... I don't know. I'm gonna get rid of... I guess the phaser now. 
There's not much I can really do here. Captain, this plant's temperature fluctuations have caused a part of my interior sensor bank to warp. Some parts of the shuttle subsystems array are invisible to me, and I think, and I like to think my body is a temple. Do you have anything handy to warm me up a little? If you warm up the panel near the power socket, it should decompress a crucial infrared board and I'll be able to reroute my connections. Yeah, sure, I got a lighter for that. Now I go ahead and feed her. That's about all I can do. Okay, now what? Dust to dust? What happened? Oh no! I fed her! What happened? Your wounds got infected. Your life is a- Oh, <laughs> I forgot to heal! I had a health pack and I completely forgot to do that along with feeding her. Whoops. Come on, Captain. Light my fire. Trusty flip lighter in hand. You, fid um, you fiddled with my power socket and warmed up the panel behind it. I promptly gained full access to my entire in-shuttle sensor array. It feels good to have full read and write and execute of the syst ship systems again. Now I can circuit board all the shuttle's electric waves. Yeah, and then I died. Because I completely forgot to heal myself along with, you know... Ah, <laughs> oh, man. That sucks. Oh well, what can you do? I meant to use the healing, you know, and then do it that way, but oops. But next time, I think we'll just bring two people. Because bringing all four was just perilous to me, because I just wasted all my food at the beginning, pretty much. So, next time, we'll only bring two. And we'll see how that works again, but man, <laughs> that sucks. I forgot to heal myself, or I could have went a bit longer. Ah, uh, whoops. Uh, oh well, <laughs> that was pretty fun in itself, though. Uh, but next time, we'll try and make it a little bit easier. Go two people, and then kind of work up from there. Because four people right off the bat? Whoo, that was hard. But, oh well, we got far enough, so... Next time, we'll just have to see what these other two are. Because they got Voyager and Survival. I don't know what any of them do. Well, Survival is kind of obvious. Voyager? I don't know what that is. We'll have to figure that out, so... Thank you for joining me for this adventure. I'll see you guys for the next adventure. Bye.